Hi everybody, Bearded Rogue here. Long time no chat. Um, and today, uh, I've been really busy with working on uh, my game designs, uh, Build the Robots and Dice Heroes, um, so much so that I haven't had a lot of time for gaming that isn't working on my prototypes. Uh, but I wanted to talk about something that uh, has kind of bothered me for a while, and I know that I've seen other people dealing with it as well. And that's imposter syndrome. Now, imposter syndrome is something that I think uh, a lot of people struggle with. I don't know if it's everyone, but I know that uh, a large percentage of the people I know have dealt with it at one point or another. And um, what it is, is it's basically you're doing something, and there's a voice in your head, or there's some feelings that you have that indicate to you that you either aren't really doing it, or you're faking it, or you're a fraud in some way, shape, or form. Like, you're conning everybody. And uh, this comes up for me in game design quite a bit, actually. You know, I'm not a published designer as of yet. Uh, I hope to be. And I'm working on it. Like, I'm actually putting in the work. This isn't, you know, some pipe dream fantasy or something I think I might like to do someday. Like, I genuinely want to be a game designer. Uh, there's nothing more enjoyable than watching somebody get enjoyment from a game that you've created. And we'll get to that in just a minute. But... Um, like, I really want this, and I'm willing to put in the work, and, uh, I am putting in the work, so much so that it's kind of become my hobby much more than board gaming itself is. Um, but, uh, I had an incident earlier this week, um, where my mood hit, like, rock bottom as far as like, I'm done with this, maybe I'm really not good enough, maybe I should just give it up and leave it to the professionals. All this negative self-talk in my head um, was going off back and forth. And um, it, it was triggered by an incident uh, involving sell sheets. I personally hate sell sheets. I am not a graphic designer. I am not a marketing person. Uh, I am quite able to explain my games, pitch my games, and in a one-on-one -on -one environment or talking to somebody or even on video, I feel that carries really well. Um, I'm really passionate about this, and that matters to people. Uh, but a sell sheet is such an impersonal thing. Um, it's such a, like... I don't know, it, it's just kind of, for me, somebody who's not experienced in marketing or advertising or any of the other uh, skills that a sell sheet needs, really, uh, that producing a sell sheet needs, um, it's painful for me to create them, actually, because I start struggling with, you know, well, what makes my game special? What, you know, how do I highlight it? Like, I know it's fun. I've seen people play it. People have asked me to play it and enjoyed it. So, obviously, on some level, it's fun. But how do I convey that in a static document that has absolutely no emotion or, um, or anything attached to it? You know, so... A lot of the sell sheets I've seen as examples, to me, don't even translate to an emotional impact. They're very factual, like, you know, these are the mechanics, and this is how long the game takes, and these are pictures, and if you don't like it, then move on. Like, so I don't know if I'm just looking at bad examples, or if they totally miss me, like if, if I'm some sort of anomaly where the marketing or the, the hype isn't even present. I mean, I know that I can get hyped for things, I've backed enough Kickstarters at this point to know. Um, you know, I, I get caught up in other people's excitement about things regularly, and sell sheets just don't do it for me. So there's something I struggle with as a designer, like, painfully struggle with. So, uh, some other designers on Twitter, some very fantastic people, uh, Grant Rodiak and Matt Wolf, said, hey, you know, write up your initial sell sheet and run it by us, and we'll give you some criticism. And I'm like, oh, this is fantastic. Like, these guys both know what they're doing. They're both published designers. Uh, Grant, at this point, is a self-published designer. Matt has designs coming out in a couple of places. I'm really looking forward to Avalanche at Yeti Mountain. Um, but uh, there's so many different uh, so many different things that they could possibly say to me um, that would be valuable for me going forward. Um, and 
I, they're, you know, I, I had to take them up on their offer. You know, if these guys who've been where I've been are going, are going to take the time and are willing to give me advice, then I should take them up on it. So I did. I ran it by them, and they skewered me, and rightfully so. Like, I want to put out there, the sell sheet was bad. It's still not great. I know this is a weakness of mine, which is why I went looking for help anyway. Um, but the two of them were very, very honest in their criticism, and very correct in their criticism. So this isn't a critique of them at all, but the entire time, instead of just hearing the critique, instead of hearing, you know, well, this needs to be different, and this needs to be different, or you need to work on this, all I could hear was, you know, you're no good at this, you can't do this, obviously you weren't meant to, you know, continue on in this path, you weren't meant to, uh, you weren't meant to actually ever sell these games. You should just give this up and stop wasting your time on it because now you're wasting other people's time by showing them such shoddy things like these sell sheets and, you know, like, uh, all the, the negative self-talk started. Like, uh, all the imposter syndrome kicked in nearly immediately and I started hitting, like, a really, really bad uh, depressive slump. Now, part of it is that I'm overstressed from work, I'm really tired, I've been sick on and off for the last two weeks. So there's all sorts of other things going in, and I'm not saying that Grant or Matt caused anything. All this imposter syndrome stuff is there in the back of my head all the time. All they did was, um, was give me some honest criticism to help me as a designer. And I don't have any problem with getting that at the table, like with my game designs. I want people to tell me what they actually think. Um, <laughs> otherwise I can't possibly produce the kind of emotional responses I'm looking to create. Like, I want people to have fun with my games. I want people to enjoy my games. I want playing one of my games to be the highlight of someone's day, you know, because that's how other people's games are for me. So that's what I'm really looking for, and this is no different. Like, sell sheets are just another part of the process, and I'm gonna have to get good at it eventually. Like, I'm gonna have to figure it out or find some way that I can end around sell sheets as part of my process. Like, I'm either gonna have to figure out how to do videos, or I'm gonna have to figure out which publishers don't require sell sheets, and, um, or, you know, look at other alternatives. Maybe I'll find somebody to do my sell sheets for me, if it's something that I just can never pick up. Um... Regardless of what the solution ultimately is, um, the imposter syndrome was there, and it was nagging at me, and I went to bed depressed, and I woke up pretty depressed and demoralized, and, um, you know, I'd still done some of the work. Like, I still sat down with the criticism and started making changes on the cell sheets, and they're better now. Like, the cell sheet for Build the Robots is much better than it was when I had Grant and Matt first look at it. It's still not great, but it's better um, so there's progress. Like, I've learned how to work through the imposter syndrome, but that doesn't make it go away. Uh, so last night, finally, uh, I was, uh, you know, still dealing with all of this stuff. Maybe I shouldn't bother, etc., etc. And I brought, uh, my game Dice Heroes to game night. Um, I bring it every week. Uh, it's usually, we get in one game of it every week after we've played published games. Um, but, uh... This week we brought it in, uh, I brought it in, and we were able to get it to the table. And playing it and watching people enjoy themselves and seeing people, like, really get into it. Like, the planning and the tactical nature. It's a cooperative game, so, like, everybody's at the table working together and trying to figure out how we can best uh, do this. And, like, we tweak, stop in the middle of a game because something wasn't working and tweak a mechanic and start it up again. And then, oh my gosh, this is so much better. I can't wait to keep doing it this way. Why didn't we do it this way from the beginning? And just all those little aha moments and eurekas and, like, everybody enjoying it. And suddenly, like, Bam! I was, like, super reinvigorated. I am so ready to, like, jump back into those cell sheets, even if it is the most depressing thing in the world to me that, uh, that I can't seem to do them very well. Um, but that's really, imposter syndrome is something that, that a lot of people have to deal with, whether it's in their personal life or their job or, in my case, in game design. Um, and I find that the best thing for me Number one is it usually strikes when I'm already stressed about something else. Like, I very rarely get my imposter syndrome moments, you know, when everything is going right but this one thing. It's only when I start to get a little overwhelmed that I start to, 
to feel that. And the other thing is now, um, I'm making a little bit of a proclamation here, but now anytime I start feeling those imposter syndrome, uh, type issues, uh, I'm going to schedule some time to play my games with people or to ha to watch people play my games or to, you know, just in general interact with other people around my games instead of sitting in my head. Um, I absolutely, uh, absolutely love designing games. Uh, I love the process, I love the people involved, and I love uh, the way people interact with things that I've designed. Uh, seeing them figure out things that I didn't, or uh, seeing them just like, wow, that was really clever, you figured that out and I wouldn't have thought of it. Um, just in general, really great stuff. Um, so, imposter syndrome isn't going to beat me, and I'm just kind of putting this out there because I don't want it to beat anyone else either. Um... If you are designing games, you are a game designer, regardless of how published you are or aren't, uh, regardless of what the majority of people think of your designs, if you are creating games and other people are playing them, you are a game designer. Um, that's all that really needs to be said. Now, all of the other stuff, being published or being acclaimed or having people recognize your skill as a game designer, that'll come in time. Um, but don't ever uh, think that you're not a game designer just because you aren't putting stuff on shelves yet. Um, anyway, that's kind of all I wanted to say. I'm sure this is a little rambly, but um, I want to, again, give another shout-out to Grant and Matt, who gave me some fantastic advice. Um, I'm still working on the sell sheets, guys, and I hope the next ones that I run by you aren't uh, steaming piles, um, and that uh, I can show you guys that I'm actually learning from the time that you're sharing with me and the advice that you're giving to me. Um, and uh, just... Thank you to everyone else uh, who chimed in when I wasn't feeling myself. Uh, and thank you to everyone who played my game with me last night and talked to me about my game last night because it totally changed the way this week was going for me. And I feel so much better right now and I'm so happy uh, to continue to be involved in this wonderful hobby and with all of the wonderful people in it. Anyway, that's enough for now. Uh, Bearded Rogue, signing out.